Most of us have a go-to beverage we reach for when we need to quench a mighty thirst. But while you might pick a more common refreshment like water, juice, a can of soda, or wine hidden in a can of soda, your entire mouth is stained red, Frank. It is. Some people have way more unique drinks in mind when they feel the urge to chug. So, today we're going to take a look at some of the most bizarre beverages from around the world. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. And after that, please leave a comment and let us know what other drink-related topics you'd like to hear about. Okay, time to shotgun some weird history. In the 1990s, Chinese track coach Ma Junrin claimed that a series of world records that had been achieved by unknown runners were the result of those runners drinking a cocktail of really delicious-sounding things like caterpillar fungus and turtle blood. You know, standard energy drink stuff. Yeah. Chinese athletes have used animal parts to improve their performance for a long time. For example, they love deer penis wine, which is really and truly a thing. It was even banned from the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games due to its alleged healing powers, and for no other reason. But there could be something to it. Many traditional Chinese remedies, including those made with animal hoo-hahs, contain herbal ephedrine, which is considered by numerous sports federations to be a performance-enhancing substance. Deer schlong potions are also believed to enhance your performance in the bedroom. The deer pole supposedly works by increasing blood flow and the flow of qi, which is the fundamental life force in traditional Chinese medicine. But let's say that doesn't sound like enough for you. You want a wine made with the sex organs of dogs and seals as well as deer. Well, good news! Three Wanker Wine includes all of those ingredients, sort of like Neapolitan in ice cream, and is known to be particularly potent. And if you're in the mood to imagine what that three-doodle wine cooler tastes like, according to a team from National Geographic, it's creamier than wine made from mice. Oh, good to know. Hokkaido lies on the Okhotsk Sea, an icy arm of the North Pacific Ocean located between Japan and Russia. Japan's northernmost island is home to the headquarters of Abashiri Brewery, which is best known for its line of brightly colored beers, the concept for which revolves around the four seasons in Hokkaido. You know, sort of like how Sam Adams rolls out slightly worse tasting brews as seasonal flavors. I like that. Abashiri Brewery's line of rainbow beers includes Blue Ruhyo Draft, Red Hamanashu Draft, Green Shiratoko Draft, and Pink or Purple Jayaga Draft. And as a bonus, all four cans combine to form the Megazord. The wintry Ruhyo or Drift Ice Draft is brewed with water from melted icebergs, which annually float past Hokkaido's northern beaches, so each sip presumably tastes like adventure. Its blue hue comes from seaweed extract, as does the spring-inspired green Shiratoko Draft, which is made with fermented seaweed. Hamanashu Draft's ruby tinge comes from the Hamanashu fruit, also called the shore pear, and perhaps the wildflowers that bloom along the sea in summertime, while the Jaga Draft, made with purple potatoes, represents the fall harvest and, uh, potatoes. Man, how do you cook purple potatoes? That would be like boiling a bunch of tiny grimaces. Japanese beverage enthusiasts also like to quench their thirst with elaborate sodas, for those days when you either can't get a beer or five o'clock is taking its sweet damn time. Ramune produces soft drinks and flavors so bold they're possibly illegal, like wasabi, kimchi, curry, and teriyaki, but they're not all that spicy. They also make milder but no less unusual flavors like bubblegum, white champagne, lychee, blueberry, and banana. Nothing hits the spot on a hot day like a tall, cool glass of bubblicious. Even cooler than the weirdo flavors is the unique cold stopper bottle Ramune sodas come in. The cold stopper, which uses a glass marble and plastic ring instead of a cap, takes its name from its inventor, Hiram Codd, a 19th century Englishman who developed it as a technique for bottling carbonated lemonade. Interestingly, the word Ramune is a Japanese adaptation of lemonade. The design may look strange, but it's pretty simple. The bottle uses a glass marble and plastic ring instead of a cap. A marble is inserted into the neck of the bottle and held in place with a rubber stopper or plastic ring. The pressure from the carbonation then forces the marble against the ring to form an airtight seal. So to open a bottle of Ramune, you punch out the center of the plastic cap with your thumb and use it as a plunger to force the ball into the bottle. Pretty cool, eh? Except now your soda tastes like thumb ball. Wow, that was bad. An Yanshi, a calligraphy professor at China's Sichuan University, has patented a way to grow green tea in the poop of pandas, which apparently is a thing people want. Man, pandas aren't that cute. 
And Sijuan is home to the Yan Baifengzia Panda Base, which houses eight captive pandas, so he's got plenty of material to work with, so to speak. An markets his creation under the name Panda Ecological Tea, because calling it what it actually is would discourage people from drinking it. It comes in three grades, the highest of which was offered for 440,000 yuan, or an astounding $72,000 per kilogram. That's 10 times the cost of a rare 1960s box of Wu Yi Narcissus Oolong tea from Hong Kong, and exponentially more expensive than any car we will ever own. All for a box of Sleepy Time Panda Duke. At the presentation of his new tea, An said that pandas absorb less than 30% of the nutrition from the bamboo they eat, and that the remaining 70% is passed out in their feces, making his panda poo tea both nutritious and delicious. He also said this while wearing a panda costume, so you have got to appreciate his sense of humor. Wait, or is he trying to tell us where the tea really comes from? Four years ago, India's leading Hindu cultural group developed Gaujal, or cow water, as a healthy alternative to soft drinks. Hindus have long worshipped cows for their life-sustaining dairy products, but Ayurvedic tradition also holds that bovine urine and feces can be used to cure ailments ranging from liver complaints to diabetes and cancer. You can probably see where this is going. Yep, the cow water is piss. The good folks in the Cow Protection Department of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sang said they hoped the group's new soft drink would give a wider market the chance to enjoy the health-giving properties of bovine urine in a form they promised would not smell or taste like pee, which everyone agreed was a laudable goal. Sadly, Gao Gaul has yet to appear in U.S. supermarkets, for let's call them obvious reasons. But it has found a niche market in Italy, where it's sold as Aqua di Vaca. Rather than building a nest out of twigs, certain species of swiftlets regurgitate long strands of sticky saliva onto a wall. The saliva then hardens into a cement-hard woven cup. Huh, kind of sounds like a freshman dorm. Why are we telling you this? Because that cup of bird loogies is prized as a delicacy in China for its purported health benefits, which include a stronger liver, an enhanced immune system, and softer skin. As in, I just love your complexion, and it's got that bird spit glow. Prep involves washing the cup-shaped nest to remove feathers and droppings, because you wouldn't want to eat anything gross. The end result should resemble something like a sponge made of thin white strips. An ordinary nest sells for about $500 per caddy, which is a Chinese unit of weight amounting to just over a pound. Even rarer are blood nests, which get their name from a reddish tinge caused by blood in the bird's saliva. Either the birds were just in a fight, or they have advanced gum disease. These blood nests can cost as much as $1,300 a caddy, which seems like way too much for bird's blood. You can pretty much get that for free if you're willing to put in the work. To make the benefits of a bird's nest more affordable for the average consumer, some companies sell it in beverage form. If you're wondering what bird's nest juice tastes like, it supposedly has a slightly mineral and sugary floral flavor. The texture, however, is said to be gelatinous and lumpy, with tiny bits of bird's nest floating around inside. If you're one of those people who can't stand pulp in their orange juice, you should probably avoid bird's nest juice. Sadly, pollution and human encroachment are eroding the cliffs where the swiftlets live, so prices continue to rise. Pretty soon, you'll only be able to get it from scalpers on eBay. If you're seriously concerned with the physical effects of aging, allegedly nothing beats products based on placentophagy, which is the practice of ingesting a baby's placenta after giving birth. The placenta, a temporary uterine organ that supplies oxygen and nutrients to the growing baby via the umbilical cord, contains high levels of iron, vitamin B12, and hormones. Eating it is said to increase a new mother's energy and breast milk production while decreasing postpartum depression and bleeding. It's even supposed to make you look younger. But what if you want the benefits of the placenta without all the fuss of giving birth? Or, uh, finding an expectant mother willing to let you wait in the delivery room with a straw? Get out! Well, don't worry. Nihon Suffolkin's Placenta 10,000, a sippable peach-flavored jelly made from the placental extract of pigs, has got you covered. It's also conveniently the only beverage available on commercial flights to the ninth circle of hell. And if pig placenta doesn't sound strong enough for you, there's always Placenta Pro, made from the placental extract of horses. Presumably, it not only rejuvenates you, but also improves your galloping speed. Despite the fact that the benefits of placentophagy has never been scientifically proven, plenty of companies still sell placenta as a youth-enhancing ingredient, in everything from chips and tablets to drinks and smoothies. 
plenty of questionable health drinks make extravagant claims, but Kinohumitsu Japan bust-up drink, which purports to enlarge breasts without the need for surgery or medication, might take the cake. It definitely deserves to win a minor industry award for best product name that also tells you everything you need to know about the people who make it. Ads for the product, which contains water, fructose, concentrated fruit juices, vitamin C, beta-carotene, royal jelly, honey, and collagen from fish, claim that it remedies small, sagging, and shrunken breasts caused by deficient growth, aging, menopause, childbirth, and breastfeeding. In other words, Bust Up will bust up your busted up bust. If you're wondering what could possibly effectuate this miracle, Bust Up's active ingredient is the root of Peraria morifica, which is also known as Kwao Kruakao. It's a tuberous plant containing phytoestrogens that has been used in Thailand as a folk remedy for menopause-related hot flashes and night sweats for over 50 years. Huh, was really expecting some kind of actual magic, like a genie wish or something. Manufacturers of Peraria morifica products promote the herb as a miracle cure for just about anything that can even prevent breast cancer, which is about the only thing that could convince us to take a cool swig of fish collagen. Not to be confused with the barbecue flavoring known as liquid smoke, liquid smoking is a beverage that Dutch manufacturer United Drinks and Beauty Corporation claimed would take the edge off nicotine cravings for between one and four hours. In other words, it's a beverage to help you quit smoking. Usually, we call that vodka. The drink, allegedly popular in the Netherlands, was launched in the United Kingdom in 2008 as a way to help smokers beat the nation's recently enacted ban on public smoking. United Drinks' CEO Martin Hartman is reported to have said that the product contained no nicotine, but rather got its craving-fighting effects from a mix of South African plant roots, which gave a slight energizing effect followed by a euphoric sense of calming and relaxation. Oh, so speed. You filled your drink with speed. Where can we buy this again? The answer is, you can't. Despite these claims, in a scant 21 calories per 2,075 millimeter can, liquid smoking was torn apart right out of the gate. There were a lot of reasons for that, but the can, which resembled a pack of Marlboro cigarettes, was definitely one of them. The poorly received beverage quickly fizzled out, and today both liquid smoking and United Drinks and Beauty are no more. Peru's Lake Titicaca is home to Telmatobius culius, which is the main ingredient in rana imaca. That translates to frog juice in English, but the drink is more widely known as Peruvian Viagra, which probably moves more bottles off the shelf. And yes, it's really frog juice. Many reports hold that rana imaca is literally made by plucking a live frog from an aquarium, skinning it, and liquefying it in a blender with hot bean broth, honey, aloe, and vera. For that fresh from the lily pad taste. It also contains maca, which is an Andean root believed to boost stamina and sex drive. Because why not? They don't call it Peruvian Viagra for no reason. Once strained, the result, if properly made, will be a starchy, milkshake-like liquid that stings the throat. Doesn't that sound great? Unfortunately, mass consumption of Peruvian Viagra has led to the endangerment of Talmatobius culius, which according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, threatens Lake Titicaca's entire ecosystem. It's unclear how this will affect distribution. You may have to start getting your frog juice on the dark web from those places that sell Soylent Green. So what do you think? Would you dare to try any of these unusual drinks? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.